Hello, everyone, and welcome to this month's episode of um, Ghost Towns Talks, which is now Haunted History, um, because we're not covering Ghost Towns um, anytime soon. I do have some Ghost Towns coming up soon, but for now, we're going to be doing Haunted History Gettysburg. This is one of my favorite locations. Um, I personally believe it's one of the most haunted locations in the country, as well as I've had several personal experiences that I will talk about throughout the show. And before we get started, I do want to thank everyone for watching, and I want to thank Henderson Libraries for inviting me to do this series. I've had so much fun doing it, and I can't wait to bring you more shows down the road. Um, so let's get started with Haunted History Gettysburg. This is going to be just a quick, brief history because there is so much paranormal activity. Um, I don't want this presentation to take too long. But um, so just a quick brief history. If you guys want to learn more about it, I have included books at the end. And of course, I've also included websites where you can learn more about Gettysburg. But if you ever have a chance to get up there and visit, it, it's a must. Um, it's one of my favorite places to go, even if it's not for the paranormal activity. OK, so the quick history of Gettysburg. It was founded in 1786. The town was named after Samuel Gettys, which was an early settler in the area and a local tavern owner. By 1860, the town had 450 buildings, including carriage manufacturing facility, shoemakers, and tanneries. The town is known for more than just being a Civil War battlefield. Um, it's home to several higher educational institutions, Lutheran Theological, Gettysburg College, and Harris Area Community College. And the Gettysburg Railroad was completed in 1858, connecting Gettysburg to Hanover. The railroad station officially opened in 1859, and service ended in 1942, but the service station was restored and put back into work in 2006. In July of 1863, Union and Confederate armies battled in and around Gettysburg for three days. There were more than 51,000 casualties during this battle, and President Abraham Lincoln shared his Gettysburg address in the town after the battle. Um, it is now home to the Gettysburg National Military Park, which is where I had said you guys have to go see. Um, this is just a photo from the Library of Congress showing the battle, um, a cannon on the battlefield with the cemetery behind it. Okay, more about Gettysburg history. The big industry in Gettysburg was furniture manufacturing. Um, Gettysburg, and it remained in the town for through the 1920s, supporting many people in the town. In 1923, the industry produced almost 71,000 pieces of furniture. And then in 1927, three local furniture plants employed a combination of 522 people. Tourism has always been a big part of Gettysburg's culture and history. Um, especially dating back to the 1800s and early 1900s after the war. Um, but it has evolved and changed over the years. It's home to museums, hotels, restaurants, souvenir shops, and there's tons of tours available, including a ghost tour, which I'll talk about later. Modern tourism includes bed and breakfasts, um, ghost tours, and reenactments. The Gettysburg National Military Park, the National Cemetery, and the Eisenhower National Historic Site are must-see places when you guys do go to Gettysburg to visit. And as you can see here, here's a photo of the Museum and Visitor Center. Um, amazing displays inside that center. I've been there several times, and it's just a fun place to go and explore. Okay, the Battle of Gettysburg. It was fought from July 1st to July 3rd, 1863. It is considered the most important engagement of the American Civil War. Um, defeated, the Confederate Army was forced to withdraw back towards Virginia on July 4th. The Union Army won the battle and stopped the Confederates from their nor northern invasion plan. The victory of the Union soldiers it was what inspired Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. Okay, so let's get to some of the locations found in and around Gettysburg. Okay, we have Devil's Den, which is a hill covered in boulders. And this is one of my most interesting places to visit. I actually love going here and exploring. Um, it's located in Hawks Ridge, popular spot for sharpshooters during the second day of the battle. Um, the site today still has cannons and memorials scattered throughout. You can see the top image there of a dead Confederate soldier. It was taken after the battle by, Getty, um, by Alexander Gardner. It was taken on July 6, 1863. Gardner was a member of Matthew Brady's um, staff, and for those of you who don't know Matthew Brady, he was a major um, photographer, especially during the Civil War at the time. And photography back then was a big competition. Who could get the best photo for the uh, different newspapers that were reporting on the war? Um, so in an attempt to get an interesting photo, photo, 
Gardner and his assistant, Timothy O'Sullivan, staged the scene by moving the soldier from the main battlefield. The one interesting fact that I discovered um, in doing some research on Devil's Den is that the same Confederate sharpshooter that they have staged there with the gun propped up so nicely in the top photo, that's the one from Devil's Den. And then the one below it is from the battlefield. And it's the same person. And nobody noticed that the same rebel soldier appeared in two different photos, two separate locations, and they were more than 70 yards apart. Um, I've seen articles. If you guys are ever interested in it, just um, send me an email. My email will be at the end or my Facebook will be at the end. And um, it, it's an interesting articles that I found that actually have done some type of um, the best they can um, facial recognition in comparison to show that there is a really good chance that these are the same person in the two different photos. Spangler Spring. Spangler Spring is a natural. Um, actually, let me go back real quick. I know I wanted to say something. Um, Devil's Den is where I've had my most interesting uh, paranormal encounter. So I know later on we'll be talking about paranormal activity, but since we're here, I want to talk about it real quick. I was right in the area where you can see on the top photo where that um, the gun is propped. And I was taking photos and I looked around and there was a man dressed in complete Confederate gear. Didn't think anything of it because there was a reenactment happening while we were visiting. Um, he walked by me, tipped his hat and kept walking. Um, I wanted to take a photo, so I took off after him. And when I turned around the boulder, there was nobody in sight. And I would have seen him if he had taken off running or was continue walking, but he was just gone. So in my you know, experience, I do believe I had an encounter with a uh, apparition at the location. Um, just looked human as can be. And I'm also, I'm wondering, I wish I could remember 100% back to that because I'm wondering if it might be that person in the photo. Okay, so moving on. Spangler Spring. This is another place I've had an interesting encounter at, which I'll talk about. Um, it's a natural spring on the southern base of Culp's Hill. Each side took time occupying this area during the battle. Um, it actually was reported that they had a truce on the night of July 2nd to allow both sides to pass safely and fill their canteens in the spring. Since then, the War Department has constructed a permanent stone and concrete cover over the spring. They did this in 1895. You can see it there in the photo. And this was because a lot of people were coming, tourists were trampling over it, and they were afraid that it would contaminate the groundwater. Today, the spring is not used for water, um, but it is still there as a place to go and visit. Several people have had paranormal experiences at Spangler Spring. There's talks of a uh, lady in white that you can see there um, who is reportedly believed uh, she was supposed to meet her um, loved one after the battle at Spangler Spring and he never showed up, um, probably because he had died during the battle. And she's still there mourning the loss or waiting for him. When I was there, I was actually down those steps inside that area um, looking around and I felt something grab my shoulder and it was a forceful grab. But when I turned around, there was nobody there. And also a common complaint among paranormal researchers is that our equipment dies. I went through three different batteries in my camera and all of a sudden my camera just started rewinding on its own. Could it have been um, tech malfunction? Possibly. But the rest of the time we were visiting Gettysburg and we were there for two weeks, nothing else happened. So I truly believe that that experience was paranormal. Gettysburg Hotel. I love staying at this hotel. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's an award-winning hotel. As you can see, it's won several awards. Um, in 19 1797, it originally opened as Scott's Tavern and is steps away from the Wills House, which is where President Lincoln penned the Gettysburg Express, or Gettysburg Address. <clears throat> Over the years, the hotel has expanded and transformed into an upscale boutique hotel that you see standing there. Absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Triangular Field. Now, this is going to be an interesting one because I have a video to show you. Um, it's nestled northwest of Devil's Den, vast open land. You can just see, you know, the whole thing. It's gorgeous. Um, apparitions of sharpshooters are found by the rocks. You can hear disembodied rebel yells. Impressions of bodies in the grass appear, and it almost looks like it's moving like in a crawling fashion, so as if someone was shot and was crawling for safety. Um, phantom cannon fire and moanings and screams. Um, many visitors assume that they're actually interacting or seeing reenactors, which is what this video will show you. Um, more than 40,000 men died or suffered significant injury at this field. Okay. 
So this video right here is from Ghost Lab. I don't know if you know the Kling Brothers, but um, they had a show on Discovery Channel called Ghost Lab. And this was a video he took when he was a child and got that's what got him interested in the um, paranormal. So this is gonna explain a little bit about what he saw and what he experienced and also show the actual video of what he captured. started in this field, this field right here, 20 years ago on a trip to the historic battlefield, Brad Kling made a surprising discovery that propelled his interest in the paranormal. July 6, 1990, I was on a family vacation in Gettysburg. It was broad daylight and we're driving out of town. I look over in this field and I notice this group of, of Union soldiers just wandering in the field. I think they're doing a reenactment. So I tell my dad, hey, pull over. I want to get this on videotape. He does. I jump out, run about halfway across this field, stop, and I pan across. They're in frame for just a few seconds, and I stop it because I want to get a little bit closer. As soon as I look up and start running again, they're gone. And I mean, nowhere to be found. They would have had to move about 300 yards in a second to be out of my sight. There was no possible way. It was at that very moment that I knew that the paranormal existed. And I've been wanting answers ever since. Actually sleeping in the bed where his stepmother was hacked to death with an axe. Yeah, it's already starting. Ghost Lab, Tuesday, October 19th at 10, only on Disney. Okay, so I thought that was a really interesting video. Um, I hopefully you guys found that as interesting as I did. And um, for those of you who are interested, um, Ghost Lab is not airing any more that I know of, but it is. You can find the replays on Discovery Plus and other um, live streaming channels, or not live streaming, but streaming services. Whoops. There we go. Okay, so is Gettysburg haunted? I know I've already shared some experiences that I've had, um, some experiences that other people have, and that video is very compelling. Um, but I want you guys to decide for yourself. There are way too many paranormal claims um, for someone to say, no, it's not haunted. But I, you know, it's one of those things where you just got to experience it for yourself. So um, I'm going to run down the list. I think I have two or three slides of different paranormal activity. Um, and this is not all of it. There are so many more. Uh, Mark Nesbitt has 10, 12 books about different paranormal activity throughout the town that he's collected. Um, so there's claims of paranormal activity have been reported for more than 100 years. Phantom cries of wounded soldiers, lifelike apparitions, being touched by unseen forces, strange phantom forms captured in photographs, including an image that looks like Confederate General Robert E. Lee. Um, the Daniel Lady Farm was a Confederate Army field hospital, and there's reports of disembodied screams and random apparitions. Cashtown Inn has a, reports of a soldier killed at the site during the battle, and the current owners claim they have ghostly proof of their go, proof of their ghostly visitors, including light anomalies and skeletons appearing in photos. The lights turn on and off on their own, and there's loud thumbs sounding like doors opening. Loud thumbs sounding like doors are opening and closing. Gettysburg Hotel, apparition of a woman dancing in the ballroom, spirit of a Union soldier um, from Company D roams the halls, and then there's a phantom housekeeper. She rifles through people's stuff. Um, some have reported they leave during the day and come back home or come back to their room and their clothes are put away. <clears throat> so a lot of strange occurrences in their room when they're not there. Um, the Balladary Inn is believed to have for a glimpse into the life after death and is believed to be very terrifying. Um, it's believed to be haunted by Confederate soldiers who were buried underneath a nearby tennis courts. And from what I understand, they're not very happy. Um, the ghost train is a tour that you can take. It's a 90 minute ride. Um, passengers on that ride report smelling cigar smoke when smoking is not allowed. Seen spirits of soldiers roaming on the train and nearby rail tracks. The Gettysburg battlefield is haunted by soldiers from both sides, the Union and Confederate armies, Devil's Den, we talked about, but other people have heard gunshots, drums, sightings of, bare, of a barefoot man, and several other apparitions. Saks Bridge has rumors of Confederate soldiers who are believed to have deserted their unit haunting the bridge. Um, they're believed to be haunting the bridge shortly after they were captured and hung on the bridge's beams for deserting. The Tilly Pierce House, um, uh, Tilly Pierce House Inn has reports of hearing footsteps, spirits sitting on beds, and a soldier walking up and down the stairs. In the blue room of that hotel, guests experience um, an unseen force sitting on the edge of their bed, and they can feel the bed go down. And then the Hoffman Mansion is believed to have a make been a makeshift hospital, and Union soldiers took up residency in that home. 
People now see apparitions of soldiers and hear disembodied voices. Jenny Wade House. This is the place where the only U.S. or the only citizen was shot and killed by a stray bullet during the battle. Some believe Jenny still haunts the locations. Um, reports of being scratched, pushed, and pinched by an unseen force occur in the home. Gettysburg College is home to many historic buildings, including emergency hospitals and morgues that were used for the battle. Students and professors have reported experiencing paranormal activity. Objects go missing and move around on their own, lights flicker, um, and several encounters with negative entities. Reports of a spirit of a blue boy who was an orphan who froze to death near the college. They've been reported seeing looking in the windows of the college, college room dorms and several on the second floor or above have seen him and there's nowhere for him to be standing if it was a real person. So he would have been floating and looking in the window. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Children's Orphanage has a history of trauma, abuse, and tragic events. Children have, were believed to have been chained to the walls and locked up for days without food or water. And it's believed that many of these children still haunt the location. Rosa Carmichael was in charge of the orphanage and she was the one who is believed to have chained up the children. She is also believed to still haunt the location and she's a very negative entity that is there. Um, the orphanage is now the Soldiers National Museum. Okay, here's just a few more. Little Round Top was a strategic point during the Battle of Gettysburg and is now rumored, or and there are rumors that George Washington actually appeared to before the Union soldiers two different times. The first time he wanted to kind of lead them in the right direction towards the battle. And then the second time he appeared to the same troop, her company, it was to motivate them to keep moving forward because they felt defeated and didn't want to continue. This area is also known as the Valley of Death and the slaughter pen because of the many deaths that occurred there. One of the most paranormally active locations on the battlefield, um, sites of a soldier in union, union uniform is known to roam the area and interact with reenactors. The Gettysburg National Cemetery is a very active supernatural hotspot in the area and has almost 4,000 Civil War graves. Farnsworth House Inn is one of the most haunted homes in the location. Um, and it's believed to have more than a dozen spirits haunting it. There are reports of May, who is a nurse. She's still doing her job. And then Jeremy, a little boy who was accidentally killed in the area, um, is also believed to be haunting the location. When you go visit the Farnsworth house, you can see approximately 100 bullet holes in the brick walls. So is Gettysburg, is Gettysburg haunted? I personally would say so. Um, and I'm assuming from all of the details that I've shared, the quick details I've shared with you in the short presentation, um, I think you guys have an idea that it probably is very haunted. Okay, so visiting Gettysburg. I have the website up for the National Park Service. This is where you can plan your visit, get information about the different things to do. Um, the Ghost of Gettysburg Tour, uh, a friend of mine, Mark Nesbitt, runs the tour. Um, great guy. He's also authored several books um, about the paranormal, including Ghost of Gettysburg series, and um, I think he's also actually, I know he's done because I've read one of them. He's um, Blood and Ghosts, which is about haunted crime scenes, which is really good. Outside of the battlefield and the cemetery, musty locations include the Visitor Center, McMillan's Woods Campgrounds, the David Wills House, and the Eisenhower National Historic Site. <clears throat> Here are a couple different books that I found at the Henderson Libraries about Gettysburg. And that... Okay, our next presentation is going to be Haunted History, Key West, Florida. This is an amazing location, lots of haunted paranormal activity, and I think this one's going to be another fun presentation. Here's a little bit more about me, if you guys are interested. Um, I also have my Facebook pages where you can find me. Okay, and then here's an update on some projects that I've been working on. Real Haunts Ghost Towns is now available on Tubi and Roku. And that is where we went to different Nevada ghost towns, um, Goldfield, um, Rhyolite, Gold Point, and Nelson. Real Haunts 3 is going to be coming out in May 20th. Actually, I think the date's changed to May 31st. Um, and that is a continuation of Real Haunts Ghost Towns. And it has unseen footage of my team and then a couple other teams across the US as well. So it's not just ghost towns. 
Haunted Southern Nevada Ghost Towns is a book that I wrote. It'll be available August 22nd. It's available now for pre-order. Um, you can find it on Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, and Amazon. Um, Legends of Ghosts in the Vegas Valley coming out next fall. Haunted Florida Lighthouse is coming out next fall. And I have several paranormal related books that I'm writing with Chris McKinnell, who is Ed and Lorraine Warren's grandson and members of the Warren Legacy Foundation for Paranormal Research. So I wanna thank everyone for joining me for this presentation. Again, thank you Henderson Libraries for having me. And I hope you guys all have an amazing day and I will see you next month when we talk about Key West. <laughs>